What up guys, Miguel here, VegaTech, and in the spirits of Joey's video about Qualcomm versus MediaTek chipsets, in this video we've created a sequel explaining Samsung's Exynos and Huawei's high silicone chipsets. <laughs> Starting off with Exynos, back in 2010, Samsung launched the Hummingbird S5 PC 110, better known as the Exynos 3110, with the launch of the first ever Galaxy S smartphone. One issue in regards to the chipset was it used a PowerVR SGX540 GPU that really wasn't kicking it. So Samsung decided to go full arm and slapped on a Mali 400 MP4 GPU on the Exynos 4210 found on the Samsung Galaxy S2. Fast forward to today, and with the release of Samsung's flagships, we can't help but wonder why something like the Galaxy S and Note 10 series need Snapdragon variants. I mean, Joey stated in his video that Qualcomm's Adreno GPUs perform better than the Mali ones. But really, is that the only reason? Well, needless to say, that Qualcomm x Samsung relationship is a pretty complex one. According to this excerpt from a WCCF Tech article, according to the Korea Economic Daily, Qualcomm abused the standard essential patent license to prevent Samsung from selling its modems and integrated chipsets for around 25 years. So in 1993, an agreement was made that allowed Samsung to make their own modern chips using certain CDMA patents, but only for their own phones. For those of you who don't know, CDMA is a frequency band used by a majority of US phone carriers. What that agreement meant was Samsung would need to pay a fee to Qualcomm if they wanted to use their Exynos chipsets in other phones that weren't theirs. That makes a complicated business relationship as Samsung wants to sell their Exynos chipsets to other phone manufacturers, but Qualcomm basically disallows them from doing just that. There's been a lot of back and forth between the two companies regarding this issue over the years, and it can get really complex because Samsung actually manufactures the Snapdragon chipsets by Qualcomm even today. As to why we get Snapdragon variants of Samsung's flagships, it's simple. The Qualcomm chipsets have better CDMA modems. Yes, the Exynos chipsets can accommodate CDMA, but apparently they don't reach the standards relevant to the US and countries alike. Now for Huawei's Kirin chipset. Kirin chips are produced by HiSilicone, a subsidiary of Huawei that purchases licenses for CPU and GPU designs from ARM. What really sets Huawei's chips apart from the competition is connectivity like literal network connectivity. Huawei has a lot of expertise in engineering cell towers and it does give them a huge advantage when it comes to optimizing their smartphone's mobile internet speeds. Globe and Smart, the two major telecommunication companies here in the Philippines, use Huawei engineered cell towers, thus giving them even more of an advantage in the case mentioned earlier. This should be the case in places like China as well as rural America, which does use, again, Huawei engineered cell towers. In regards to the trade ban, Huawei introduced Harmony OS as their plan B, if found in a situation where they lose support from Google. When it comes to hardware, one of the players included in the ban is ARM, which yes, is a British company, but some of their designs are developed in America. The reason I mention this is because people might forget that we have yet to see a plan B from Huawei in regards to their hardware. And without any support from ARM, this could be the end of Kirin chipsets. As to why they don't sell their chipsets to other manufacturers, this is because these high silicone Kirin chipsets are purposely designed and optimized for Huawei phones, ranging from their mid-ranges to their flagships. That's about 70% of their smartphones using their very own Kirin chipsets, with their entry-level smartphones using Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 series SoCs. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. I do hope you guys learned something new today. Let us know in the comment section below if you want us to do another explainer video on the Apple A-series chipsets and why they are the most powerful ones today. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smack that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit that bell icon so you can notify for future uploads. Be sure to visit yougetech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Again, this has been Miguel, and I'll see you in the next one.